Hey y'all, and welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And we just, I, you all know this. I know y'all already know this. Everybody uses this. Everybody uses this apple peeler. But we, this is the first time we ever used it, and freaking genius. I actually think someone said this to me when we still lived in the pole barn. Yeah. And this is my first time using it. So thank you so much. It is <laughs> quite the genius invention. Game changer. So today we are do we uh, actually when we went to Gatlinburg, uh, there's an apple orchard that we love. In our area, we don't have any really close to us, and Jen had been wanting to get a bunch of apples to yep. do all the apple things. So we went to Gatlinburg, went to the apple orchard, we got a bunch of Fuji apples. That's big, but I think they bushel. call it a bushel. Yeah. yeah. Big old bucket of them. Um, and we got Fuji, so that's probably our favorite, mm -hmm. I would say, in this family. And so initially, the goal here is to make apple butter. Yes. But in that process, we're also going to be making apple cider vinegar with the leftover stuff. And then, maybe not in this video, but we're going to make some moon chat. Yep. Alright, so let's get on this thing. Kind of double team thing there. There you go. It's not going to hit the core because it's crooked. Uh -oh. On here. Because it's missing the core. There we go. Okay, so what we're doing here, we have about 16 good sized apples, um, you would say. So after she gets done using this coolest thing in the world, pull that bad boy back there. You know what? We're gonna show them how to do that. So you pull that back, put your apple on there, put it right in the core bottom, that's what we're doing. And then, let me hold this so you can pull forward. Put that up there and then watch this machine work. So it peels it. And then once it gets to the core, you're just gonna get a little effort. But then that's going through the core, so then it's cored and peeled beautifully. Genius. Very genius. So, what she's doing there, she's then taking all the peels and the core, throwing it into a gallon jar. And then over in here is where the apple butter magic is gonna happen. So you take all the other apple stuff in there. Okay, so we're using the ball recipe for doing apple butter. So we've got all of our apples in, and now we're gonna do two cups of water. Okay, that's actually all we're gonna do for now. I just reread the recipe. I was about to put everything in, but I'm glad I didn't because I reread that, and we put the two cups of water in, and then we let it simmer for a little bit, about an hour maybe, um, until everything starts to kind of reduce down, and then we come back and put the other stuff in. But wait, there's more. So while that's doing that, we're gonna make the apple cider vinegar. Yes. All right, so we've got all that's in here is just the cores and the pills. That's all that's in there. And Jen will tell you how to do the rest, because I don't know how. Okay, for the apple cider vinegar, we've got all of our peels and cores in there. And then we're gonna do one tablespoon of sugar per one cup of water. And we're using filtered water, because you don't want anything with chlorine in it. So we're using our Berkey. Um, so for every, we're going to use a measuring cup. So one tablespoon per one cup of sugar. We're going to be here a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Run low. All right. And now we're putting a coffee filter over it and a rubber band. And just make sure it gets covered. Thankfully, it's winter time, so the fruit flies won't be trying to find it. Unless yeah. they're still left in here. <laughs> they probably are. <laughs> but we're going to put it in a dark cabinet and we're going to let it sit for two weeks and then we'll come back after that. That's simple, huh? Yep. So that will not be part of this video because we're not going to wait two weeks to show you how to make apple butter. But stick to our channel, hit the subscribe button, you get to see the next step after two weeks is up. Yep. Been a couple hours and they're very soft and smooth and done. Um, and they're sitting in some liquid, so we are going to take our immersion blender. Pretty sure you're supposed to use a food mill, but I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> or have that, so we're not going to do that. We're going to do an immersion blender and get everything pureed. So really, I guess what you could do, like what ball, you can go outside until she stopped because me, is you would have cooked this in like a large saucepan, like a stock pot kind of thing, taken it out and maybe blended it up or something like that, but we're just doing this all in the crock pot. Um, it would also have been faster doing it in a saucepan if you wanted to do it that way. 
Okay, round two. Using a potato masher to start, then going to emulsion blend. That seems to be working a little better. Oh. All the fun sounds. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Potato masher was better. It was. It's, it's also, this is a really worn out one though, so it doesn't work well anyway. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna add the sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Um, we're gonna do four cups. I don't know, I feel like two's enough. Yeah, it feels that way. I think we're gonna stick with two. Stick with two, yeah. okay. Okay, we're gonna do a tablespoon of cinnamon. Um, the recipe didn't call for it, but I did a splash of vanilla because I feel like it needs it. Mm. Now we're gonna do a fourth a teaspoon of cloves. We just did a little taste test off camera and had fantastic. It's really good. So one of our favorite places to go is the Apple Barn in Gatlinburg to eat. And they have apple butter with their uh, like apple fritters and that tastes identical. Yeah. So uh, I would definitely recommend doing the vanilla. Um, definitely doing the two cups of sugar. I think if you did all four, that'd be yeah, way too sweet. I think two is plenty. Yeah. So that's good. Just the two cups. Now, one thing we're noticing is it's not making much. And we got a lot of apples. Yeah. So we'll probably, this will be good for you all, but then probably in the next couple of days, we'll get the big turkey roaster out mm -hmm. and then make a bunch of apple butter. Yeah, because I want to give some for Christmas too. Yeah, exactly. And apple butter is just, it's one of those good ones, man. Yeah. It's just, it's good on I'm a really lot of things. Of it. Like, don't just think just on your toast. Like, you can get really creative with apple butter and things and using it as like a dipping sauce. Like I said, apple barn does it for their apple fritters. Um, so, yeah. We'll get this going. All that's going to season in there together, and then it's going to thicken. So we're now we're just waiting for the thickening agent to happen, um, and it's supposed to like mound on a spoon. So just think how you would like it when you get out of a jar, kind of like. And then we'll water bath can. Yep. Okay, so while that's thickening, this is your time to start getting your canning area prepped. So you want to get your water bath filled up and start getting hot because it takes a while to get all that water to boil. And then Jan's starting to get some of the jars prepped. We're using jelly jars and then, I don't technically, is this called a jelly jar? Yeah, like a half pint. Half pint, maybe. Uh, so we got a little mixture of air, but it'll be the same process in time. We'll just process it for the max of those two. Uh, but yeah, this is when you want to start doing it. So get that done now. That way you don't have to wait too long once that thickens. It's been, what, what would you say, about two hours? Uh, maybe a little more than that. Maybe a little more than that. We've had dinner. We had some street yes. tacos tonight. They were very good. So now it is time to start ladling this in. It smells so you can good. see about how thick it is. Really, this is just preference, however mm -hmm. thick you want it. And however chunky you want it. That's right. That's exactly right. As you can tell, we got some apples in ours. Um, a lot of apple butter didn't have any apple chunks at all. Um, but again, like she said, preference. Okay, so she's gonna fill these up and the headspace required is a fourth inch or a quarter inch. Um, and that is what we're gonna do here. Man, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Here she goes again, Jen. <laughs> Starting in the back. I'm just gonna sit here the whole time. It's fine. She'll get to this one at some point. Now I feel like she's starting to go intentionally slow. No, you gotta be careful. Look, she intentionally didn't no, hit I these didn't. top three. Look, yes, you did. Look, you went down that line and you left these front ones empty. We're one more away. We have made it. Okay, now we got our white distilled vinegar, paper towel, put it on it. We're gonna wipe the rims just to make sure that there's no apple butter that get on there because that'll give you a, well, it won't so not a false, it won't sell at all. All right, and now you just wanna place your what is it, lid and ring on, fingertip tight. So just boom, just like that. Don't give it the extra ump. That's hot. <laughs> and the canner we go. Let's have a little bit. Sure. Nice, boiling hot water bath. This is why you get this stuff prepared. It's already boiling. Rack in. Come on, baby. No. Oh, no. Yeah, I can get it in there. I can make it fit. Yeah. It's fitting. Look at that. Exactly the right amount. Look at that. Yes. Going in. It on. Okay, by the hair on our chinny chin chins, we got them all in there. And so now these bad boys are gonna, we're gonna, well, we gotta get back to a boil. Yeah. Remember that. So even though we was at boiling, putting those jars in there, took it down. So wait till it starts boiling again. Once you got that, 15 minutes. Set your timer, then you can take them out after that's up. I almost said wait till the pressure went out, but we're not pressure canning. Not today. All right, today. All right. See you in probably about 30 once we get back to a boil. Timer is up. Turn the heat off and let's take these bad boys out. There you go, 12 beautiful can jars of apple butter. Okay, 
So we still have one more way that we like, one of our favorite ways to do uh, preserve our apples or process our apples uh, coming up. But I wanted to give you all a quick break uh, to tell you about another way that we like to do it. We're just not doing it this specific way, but that's freeze drying your apples. So right here we have a bunch that we've done in the past. Uh, freeze dried apples, um, it's a great way, it's a great snack to have on hand. And these freeze dryers actually have something going on right now that is the reason I really wanted to tell you all. In November, they start their Black Friday immediately on November 1st, so it's active right now. They're taking $500 off these machines. And you know, that's the biggest complaint that we all have is they're very expensive. And now is the cheapest time that you can possibly get a freeze dryer. So if you're interested in one, now's the time to do it because $500 off is a big deal and that's a lot of money. And it changes your preserving game. This, these apples will last up to 25 years in this Mylar bag, which is absolutely amazing. If you're interested, link's always down below. But if you're on the fence, this is the month to do it. Okay, it is the next day, and this is the last way that we're gonna show you to preserve your apples that you have. So, this one, now listen, I'm from Kentucky, Jen and I are, we live in the Appalachian Mountains. The name I'm giving this, I know, is not truly what it is. We know how to make the real thing. That's not what we're doing. We are making apple pie moonshine. Again, I know, there is no still involved here whatsoever. This would be more like, I guess, flavored vodka, if you really want to call it that, but the, the name of it is Apple Pie Moonshine. So this is something, Moonshine is a staple in this area, it's just a thing that it is. Um, this is a fun way, a nice holiday thing that you could do for Apple Pie Moonshine. Uh, you can give it in gift baskets, um, you can hit it when it's Thanksgiving morning and all the family's there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, it's just something cool to have, alcohol's a good thing to have in the pantry for just different needs. You can also cook with this stuff. So. It's very similar to the apple butter. We're just not gonna add as much stuff. We're gonna use more of just the apple juice itself and flavor it up a little bit. Um, but the beginning is exactly how we did the apple butter. We're gonna peel and core a bunch of apples, get them in a big pot, and then we're gonna start reducing that down and getting all the juices out of those apples. So let's go ahead and get that going. I will also add there is like one bajillion ways to make homemade apple pie moonshine or any kind of flavored alcohol that you're trying to do. Um, this is just a way we like to do it. We like to keep it simple, like to keep, try to keep it low on the sugar and just really emphasizing the, the flavor of the apple because we like that with just a hint of cinnamon. But there's a million different recipes out there. Um, all you gotta do is search them out, but we, we quite like this one. Okay, I would say there is probably about 20 good size apples up in this big tank that we have here. And so all we're gonna do, again, like I said, is just like the apple butter. Hey, spilling water. We're gonna add two cups of water and then cook it on about a medium low simmer and just let all the juices come out of the apples. Come back and make sure that you're stirring so it doesn't stick on the bottom. And yeah, just cause I know it'll be down there in the comments. We're not making alcohol, right? So we bought the alcohol, it's just Everclear. Uh, and then we're infusing it in a sense. So, Infused apple pie, Everclear vodka. There you go. It's been a couple of hours, and as you can tell, we are lit. Maybe you can't tell because it's fucked up. But it's gotten pretty juicy up in there, so we've got quite a bit of apple juice. So now we're gonna strain all those apples out. All right, so as you can tell, it takes a lot of apples to make a lot of, a lot of juice. So this isn't gonna make a whole lot of apple pie moonshine. And to be honest with you, a lot of people that do this, they'll actually go buy like uh, apple cider like in a jar already made. Or apple juice, yeah. Or apple juice, so they'll already have all that stuff. Kind of well, like. we don't want to do that because it's got way too much sugar in it. Exactly. And we had, you know, locally grown apples, so no point in buying apple cider, we can make our own. Right, so don't think that you're gonna get like a gallon of booch out of this, unless you want it very strong with a little hint, because <laughs> then you can just add more Everclear, I guess. But you know, this will be good. Now we're gonna add our ingredients to make it apple pie. Okay, we're gonna put eh, four sticks of cinnamon in there. Let's say maybe four or five cloves. And then let's do about a fourth cup of sugar. We'll just call it a day there. Hey, gosh darn. Look at that, it's right there. Pumpkin pie spice. I'm just gonna, whoa, hey. About that much, how much that was. <laughs> and so as you'll notice, this is boiling hot. Like it's really hot juice. So we're not worried about putting it back on the stove or anything like that. We're just trying to get that sugar dissolved. Cause honestly the flavor is gonna grow as the time grows. So we'll just have this, that'll get the sugar dissolved. And then you don't want to cook your alcohol. So once we get this in here, it's just gonna sit here uh, and cool. Get down to completely room temperature before we actually bottle up. But honestly, that's it. You just want to kind of get that flavor. You want to try it? Mm. 
looks hot. And a little side note, when you're using like full cinnamon sticks and full cloves and stuff like that, like you're not gonna get that immediate flavor um, uh, right out the get-go. So when we taste this, we're mainly tasting for the sugar, like is the sugar level what we want it to be? Oh, that's good. That's good, come and try it. That's hot. It's not hot, just blow it. Just let it sit here for a second. Tastes like good cider to me. That's good. That's good? So we're just gonna let that sit and completely cool down and we'll show you how to bottle up. We told mom, you know when your alcohol says flammable, handle with care on the top. It, it's. It's a, ah, one. it's a legit one. Yeah, it's got so, a whole warning down here. Yeah. Away from yeah. heat and open flame. Yeah, so this is pure alcohol. It's 95%, 190 proof. Okay, so we are dealing with what is Everclear, but it's made here in Bargetown, Kentucky. We're not in Bargetown, oh. but it's in Kentucky. This. You know what, I think we can't call this moonshine just because of how freaking high proof this is. Smells like regret. So, I, at first I was gonna put this whole thing in here, but I don't think that we're gonna match up well. So I might start at a half and we'll see what goes from there. So we're actually gonna strain it out. So we are gonna have some cinnamon cloves that we're gonna put in our jars, but we don't want those cloves in there. You just don't want anybody, you know, drinking a clove <laughs> kind of thing. All right, and let's go with this. Yeah. Okay. I end up using about that much of it, just a little over half. I can go and tell you it's gonna be strong at first, but it's well, gonna have to sit, yeah. yeah. So we'll try it, and I'm sure it's not gonna taste like apple pie moonshine. Yet. Because it has to sit. That's right, but we still need to taste it out and see how we are on where it stands. So let's say uh, you get us a little, little something, something, mm -hmm. a little sip, sip. Okay, so we just got a little bit in the cup here. As expected, the taste is a lot better than the smell. Can't even really taste the alcohol. I'm serious. Okay. Oh, it burned my nose. Yeah, you can't smell it. You gotta hold your breath. I breathe in. Just take you. Oh my gosh, just take a little sip. It ain't hard. <laughs> oh, that's good. Isn't it? Yeah. I think it's not. It's no. I mean, it's, it's still strong. It's warm. Yeah. Well, that's because it's still kind of <laughs> warm on the room head. temperature, a little bit warmer, and then the alcohol is warm in your body. Um, but it, it is good. definitely a lot smoother than it smells. Yes. You agree? Yes. Okay. So this is just going to get better. Yeah. Um, if we had apple juice, we'd probably add a little bit. Yeah. This is this is all natural yes. right here. This, you know, like I said, we actually pulped our own apples, and that's one thing that you'll see here. Let me show you. This will not be pulp free. So even though we've strained it a bunch, you see that sitting right there on top. That's gonna be a little apple pulp. Uh, just gives you a little originality, I guess. It'll get you drunk! So we just hollered at Jay. We want him to come up and try it. <laughs> Don't tell him we drank out of this cup. <laughs> you know, it's funny, he's gonna edit this, but he's already gonna have drink it, and then yeah. now he's gonna realize, like, oh crap. <laughs> just drank out of that cup. Here he comes. Try my moon chat. Just sip, just sip your thing. Alcohol. I know you don't like alcohol. Get in there. Said no one ever. Right? It's freaking thirsty Thursday. It smells good. Then, well, it smells strong and tastes smoother. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You like? Yeah. Hey. For someone that doesn't like it a whole lot, if you if it's drinkable, that means it's good. Can't think for heartburn. Not alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't bad, don't it? No, no, it's good, isn't it? Hey. There you go, two quarts and one pint of apple pie moonshine. So if you use apple juice, you would get a whole lot more, which would be good for like gifts and stuff. This yeah. one, this time is just for us. However, I do want to make a, a whole lot more stuff, not with fruit, so that we get much more volume. Yeah. And we can give it away That's for right. Christmas gifts. It'll be very exciting. Mm -hmm. And so now this will sit in just kind of a cool dark place for about, I mean, really however long you want to, just sit in a cool dark place. But the longer it says, just like fine wine, it's just gonna get better. The flavors are gonna get better. It's gonna get a less, less potent when it comes to what you're smelling and stuff like that. So always good to have. Like I said, there's a million things you can do with it besides just drinking it, but we don't hate drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, if y'all new around here, hit that subscribe button. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.